All right, folks, we want to welcome to the OLS vidcast uh, Keith Koskin from the Fox Soccer Channel. I'm sure many of you have seen him uh, around and about before. And, uh, Keith, thanks for, uh, for joining us today. No, my pleasure. Really, really, uh, really happy to join you guys today. We appreciate it, believe me. And, you know, I just want to kind of kick things off because of what happened today. Uh, one of the things that, that we did see was that uh, Spain fell victim. They were one of those teams, and they're, you know, that uh, in the first round, there's always seems to be one team. Usually it's France uh, <laughs> lately, but <laughs> this year, again, well, Spain's had their, their troubles in the World Cup, no doubt about it, but they, they lost to Switzerland uh, today. And I'm wondering uh, the kind of... Uh, a bump, bunker bob mentality that Switzerland played after they scored. Do you think Switzerland learned something from watching the United States beat, um, you know, Spain in the Confederations Cup? Yeah, I, I think so. I think any time a side like Spain, look at the record over the last few years. They've only lost one game and, you know, 40-odd international games. So if you're a team coming into playing them, you're going to look at that side who beat them and say, well, what did they do that worked? And you know, I thought Switzerland done a tremendous job. I thought the central defender, uh, I, can't, I can't think of his name right now. I don't want to mispronounce it, actually. But the, the center back was superb. And, mm -hmm. and they did. They did a, you know, just as good a job as the, the U.S. did last year. And um, maybe even a little bit better defensively, I thought, because they limited the chances, uh, particularly centrally, for, uh, for Spain. But, uh, you know, I, I think it is going to be a problem for Spain going forward because we've all talked about how this is, a, this, this is the core of the Barcelona team. Well, mm. Barcelona also have a player who's a match winner on his day, and Lionel Messi. And you know, Spain brought in someone today, David Silva, essentially playing in his role. And and mm -hmm. Silva, Iniesta, they're all good players, but they're not game-changing players like Messi is. So they have a lot of very similar midfielders, and and they don't have that thrust that can get in behind at times. So Spain, if you sit back and bunker in, as you said, they're, they're certainly beatable on their day. Well, it doesn't seem like they have anybody over five foot nine. Who can? Besides, you know, if you bring up PK from from the center back position, because I wasn't. Uh, it kind of shocked me how Spain's talented players, how you know everybody knows them, how they didn't adapt their game. They, you know, they saw that the Swiss were bunkering into the box. All of their dangerous opportunities came from passing it, possessing it, going up the middle and taking those shots, rather than taking it out to the wings and crossing it. Yeah. And they kept doing that. And they kept going cross after cross, and they were going to have to lay in the perfect of perfect crosses in order to get past the Swiss defense in this game. Yeah, I, I think, Brett, to add on to that, I agree totally with your assessment there. And I think sometimes coaches get wrapped up in their tactics a little bit. I think this is a system we'll probably see Spain play against the bigger sides and get some success. But when you know a side is going to bunker in against you, I don't see the logic behind playing just one forward in, in David Villa and, and a whole host of midfielders who essentially are going to keep possession well but not really get in behind so although Fernando Torres had struggled with injuries over the last couple of months I think if he's fit enough to be on the bench you start him and you start with him and David Villa yeah. and really go for this game earlier on and mm -hmm. and you mentioned not getting the ball wide I was a little bit surprised it took so long to get Navas to come on because I thought when Navas came on he did give them that little bit of width on that right hand side that they'd been lacking and you know the Swiss are they're nothing to sneeze at I mean they had a great qualification round and uh, Hitzfeld has done what he's always done, his, his yeah. whole career, win. And that's what they did today. <laughs> um, you know, and, and that kind of uh, brings me, and in, in, in we obviously already talked to Jamie about this extensively, but I did want to give you a chance to kind of give us your, your, your general impressions of uh, the USA-England matchup and um, what you thought about some of the peculiarities that happened in that match. Well, for me, I thought, I thought the U.S. were superb. Uh, you know, they went behind early. And, you know, everybody that I talked to, and, and I'm talking about, you know, experts from, from the top down said, if England score early, it, it could get nasty for the U.S. And, you know, when that goal went in, uh, I was actually filming in a, in a pub for Fox. Oh, yeah. And, you know, the, 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 the consensus among the fans there was, oh, this is going to be 3 or 4 nil. Mm -hmm. So the first thing for me is credit to... The, the camaraderie of the team to, to get together and say, okay, we've conceded a goal early, we're not going to let it affect us, and we're going to continue to play our game. And I thought, you know, there was pockets of play in that first half, and the U.S. kept possession really well. And, uh, you know, I thought at the time they thoroughly deserved their equalizer. Yep. Uh, they were under the cosh a little bit in the second half, but I still think, you know, Altidore's was the best opportunity to, to win the game. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, I feel, I feel the U.S. Played, uh, played very well, and I think they were fully deserving of their point. 
Yeah, I did too. And, and we talked about with Jamie as well, the really the, the ability for Gooch and Tamerit to really almost shut down Wayne Rooney. Not completely. Obviously, he had some yeah. moments in the second half, but it was a great performance. Well, yeah, you know, I, I credit them, but I also, you know, do um, I put a little bit of the pressure on Fabio Capello because for me, you know, just to compare it to the Germans, they play uh, Miroslav Klose. They know what he is. He's a forward who thrives on crosses. So mm-hmm. when he plays, they get crosses into the box. Uh, you know, Capello picked a team with a lot of players playing out of position from what they've done this season. Yeah. You know, Rooney spent the whole entire year playing as a lone front man with everything going through him, the chances you know, created for him by two wingers at Manchester United in, mm-hmm. in Valencia and Nani. Right. And all of a sudden, he's asked to play off Emil Heskey. So we saw Rooney dropping deep. And if you're a, a, one of the members of the back four for the U.S. team, that is exactly what you want to see. You want to see Rooney back in midfield, dropping, spraying the ball out wide, mm-hmm. doing anything but playing on the shoulder of the last defender. And, and he never really did that in the game. And, uh, you know, for me, it wasn't just Rooney who was played out of position. Milner... Oh. Played central midfield all season long, and he starts on the left-hand side of midfield. You know, Lampard plays as an attacking midfielder who gets in the box. His position wasn't really allowing him to do that. So, for me, there was a lot of a lot of strange decisions from Capello going into this game, and, and that certainly helped the U.S. cause. But take nothing away from Bob Bradley. I thought, you know, his man, manage, man management of his squad was superb. And, and like I said before, I think the U.S. got what, got exactly what they deserved. Yeah, and Brett and I were, of course, and, and all of us were talking about, Brett, you might want to talk about this as well, how well Chirondolo did up and down that wing. Yeah, he completely shut down that entire right side. Well, I think what happened was that he he was one of the reasons that Capello had to yank Milner out. And my question was, Keith, why why not start Joe Cole out there in the first game? Yeah, I, I think that's, that's the question on everybody's lips. Joe Cole is... Being hands down, when he plays and he's fully fit, the most influential midfielder for England. And I include Steven Gerrard, I include Frank Lampard in that. Cole has always been the man to step up on the big occasions. He's a creative player. He makes defenders defend. And we just didn't see that from Milner. And, you know, I saw an interesting quote in one of the leading English newspapers. They said, you know, this player potentially worth 30 million pounds and Milner was outplayed by a 31-year-old right back who plays for the team that finished 15th in the German League. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, it, it was it was typical English, you know, humor based on the fact that they're saying, look, we've built ourselves up. We're, we're really not that good. But I, I think Chirondolo, you know, you mentioned him as one player. I thought he had a superb performance, not only defensively, but, you know, looking to get forward and join in the attack and really made English players such as Milner look very ordinary. 